Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this day of PSMCU series and in the evening these lessons come, in the morning the Hindu Nonsense Daily videos they come and uh, every day we are taking these questions from uh, various sources like PIB, like the Hindu, like uh, uh, other important uh, newspapers and all and these are based on the UPSC pattern so core UPSC questions these are and uh, extremely helpful this compilation is going to be for the next year so let's start the lesson and uh, Pocket News app is trending on Google, Google Play. You can download that. Uh, these uh, uh, courses uh, re regarding them, uh, uh, the description is given below the video. And you can call on these numbers. You can visit the website also. There, the chat section is available there. And uh, PDF you will get here on this group. Telegram channels link you will also get there. So PDF on both these sources uh, you will get there. And you can follow me on Instagram too. Now first question is regarding article 367. In the morning session I told you about the issue because the article was talking about this uh, Suthir Parasharthi uh, wrote an important article where he said that the interpretation issue of the constitutional provisions including 370 that has been a problem there and the way JNK has been uh, made a UT there are several questions and the questions are related with this particular article that talks about the interpretation of the uh, constitutional provisions there so the answer would be D because amendment uh, is a 368 president's rule is 356 and financial emergency is 360 so uh, this article d is the answer here you can see the original text which is given in the uh, uh, constitution of india 367 you can see it talks about 372 also and it talks about uh, uh, how these acts and how these uh, uh, issues will be construed and what will be the importance of ordinances by the president and ordinances made by the governor so how these things must be construed that the article 367 talks about next article peacock parachute spider is it a cr critically endangered uh, species yes yes it's a critically endangered species in the iocn list it was there in the newspaper today that it was found in uh, andhra Pradesh uh, uh, area which is the eastern ghat not the western ghat because the degraded forests in the eastern ghat region in the andhra Pradesh there the original habitat is supposedly uh, uh, present for peacock parachute spider or tarantula as they call it it's not a mammal it's a spider so it's a uh, very obvious uh, thing that mammals we are the mammals blue whale is the mammal uh, elephant is a mammal spider is a anthropod under the uh, group of arachnida and uh, these are non chordates and mammals are chordates so this is wrong it is endemic to India, that's correct, but not in Western Ghat. It is the Eastern Ghat where it is mainly found. So these are wrong options and first only is the correct option here. This was the information. It's a beautiful spider there and it was sighted in Pakka Malai Reserve Forest near Gengi. And uh, spider's known habitat is in degraded forests near Nandial in Andhra Pradesh. So that is, that's the area of Eastern Ghats. And it's it's a pest manager also because it eats the pest so it's a biological pest manager and uh, uh, critically endangered as uh, uh, I told you about this and the issue is that conservation is needed it's a very helpful uh, animal and this has been seen after many many years and normally it is called Guti Tarantula so they may ask you with this name Guti Tarantula or, or the peacock uh, you know, what they call it parachute spider okay next kerala tamil nadu and himachal pradesh they top india's child well-being index yesterday i was talking about the composite water management index and now child well-being index this index is released by niti Ayok? no by uh, ministry of uh, women and child development no by ministry of health no answer is actually a ngo the ngo uh, which is there world vision india and research institute ifmr lead they have released this important index and they have told about the states and how kerala has dropped the chart in the child well-being index and madhya pradesh was the worst performer there 24 indicators are there and it's an important report based on three important dimensions now uh, uh, the way multi uh, dimensional uh, uh, poverty issue is released by a different institution so on the lines of that they are releasing the child well-being index so Amitabh Khan the CEO of Niti Aayog he says that it's a very important report it's a very useful report and uh, government ministries and departments they will also uh, use those data to make the 
uh, future policies and all so that's a important and compelling insights next next sites convention on international trade trade uh, no, just uh, focus on this word trade in the endangered species of wild fauna and flora means it is talking about the trade it is talking about the conservation both so that's the unique institution and it is also called a washington convention because it's a convention it's a multilateral treaty so the uh, statement looks correct but it is wrong why because it is written here washington consensus consensus is a different thing consensus is related to economy what economy where uh, the globalization was the related phenomena washington consensus uh, were some uh, 10 principles who were talking about more liberalized world market economies and all so that's washington consensus and it is washington convention the headquarters there in washington dc and uh, that's a very important one in 1963 uh, it was proposed in the iocn meeting and later in 1975 it was established there so cop 18 uh, uh, is not going on in india it is there in switzerland this year so the venue is switzerland not india so both the statements are wrong here d none is the answer d okay you can see here uh, uh, 1963 at a meeting of members of iocn and uh, it was uh, uh, put for signature in 1973 and entered into force in 1975 it has important uh, categories like appendix 1 appendix 2 appendix 3 in appendix 1 those are the uh, uh, endangered species their trade is uh, banned under this convention appendix 2 where uh, the trade is not banned but uh, if the trade is not banned uh, uh, presently then very soon these species will be under extreme threat so appendix 2 is that uh, particular list appendix 3 where uh, there is no threat to right now and there is uh, no uh, issue of ban but if any country is concerned about any species and if it uh, uh, talks to some other member country that support us in conserving this animal or the plant then uh, 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 that list would be the appendix 3 so plants and animal both are conserved here and uh, uh, trade in both their endangered species is covered here and uh, the gtt issue was also con uh, considered in the starting because uh, it talks about the trade international trade so that's important sites it's a very important one and uh, you can see we have proposed uh, some issues like that toke gecko we said that uh, uh, put this uh, animal in uh, appendix 1 but they have uh, managed to put it appendix in appendix 2 so that's important other important animals were also proposed there like smooth uh, sorry the small otter Indian star tortoise and mako shark. Indians said that uh, put all of them in appendix one, but uh, uh, accordingly they will settle up those issue. Only one animal they talk about like smooth coated otter, where it has been moved from appendix two to appendix one means the threat is increased. And twenty one thousand species are there in appendix two and appendix one. Around twelve hundred species are there, both for plants and animals. Okay, next bond challenge. today it was there in the newspaper bond challenge uh, is a very unique issue and a very important issue it is not related to biodiversity or the uh, climate change directly because it is related to all of them indirectly but uh, in a straight way we have to uh, uh, of the most appropriate answer the answer is d to restore 150 million hectares of the world's degraded and deforested lands by 2020 that's the important goal and india today said that 50 lakh hector land we will restore and uh, the time frame we are taking here is uh, 2021 to 2030 so in that uh, uh, 10 years time we will restore 5 million hectare land although we had joined uh, a bond challenge also in cop 21 and uh, we said that uh, we are taking voluntary goals here although it is not a mandatory thing it's a voluntary goal and it is going on since 2011 so bond is there in germany where this issue was taken up and uh, you can see carbon dioxide sequestration is the main issue because when on a degraded land like this when the forest will develop then it will consume a lot of carbon dioxide which is there in the atmosphere and with that carbon dioxide these trees will develop so the carbon sequestration will be automatic here and uh, it's a very important issue there will be uh, a decrease in emissions by 20% and 1 billion metric ton of the carbon dioxide will be reduced here so that's a important thing and uh, 
important goals are here pakistan's khyber pakhtunkhwa pledged something that was the first sub national pledge mean a region in a particular country sub national pledge that is fully implemented and first pledge to be increased so that's a great thing by pakistan's region and billion tree tsunami initiative they uh, ran there so that's a very important one so india is also also taking some steps here okay so that's important and uh, you must remember the important convention regarding the de uh, desertification is the unccd convention to combat desertification which was established after the rio earth summit in 1992 when it happened after that the uh, conventions were established like the unfccc unccd and uncbd so uh, this is one of those three and that's very very important cop the con con the convention of parties which happen uh, uh, after uh, three years i think so this is happening in india so that's important sorry after uh, every 2 years it happens because it is 14 so it was uh, established in 90 so uh, cop 14 is happening is going to be uh, arranged in india this year next shalija dhami shalija dhami is related to which game badminton tennis or sprint race no she is not a sports woman she is the first women air officer to become the flight commander flight commander is the second position in a command where uh, uh, the commanding officer is on the top and the second is the commander so she has become the first women air for force officer uh, who was uh, serving for 15 years now and sh she has become the flight commander there so that's a proud moment she hails from punjab and uh, 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 she has been serving there and she has been given the charge of chetak helicopter chetak helicopter these are uh, important one it's a single engine turbo shaft uh, helicopter capacity of 6 passenger and maximum speed of 220 km per hr so this responsibility is given to commander dhami wing commander dhami that's a proud moment it's she is the first woman next indian institute of petroleum iip you see there is a very unique phenomena this institution indian institute of petroleum it is actually under the umbrella organization of csir important labs are there all over the uh, country for csir and it's a important research institution in dehradun not in mumbai so it has given an idea they are working on a project what is that project project is uh, petroleum from plastic and they are also uh, uh, claiming that we will uh, make diesel and uh, aromatic compounds also from plastic plastic is based on some uh, hydrocarbon chains and uh, uh the these uh, uh, petroleum diesel these are also hydrocarbon chains so there are some common issues and uh, this important project can be the greatest invention of our times if this becomes possible that from uh, uh, plastic if they are able to create diesel petrol these kind of uh, fuels then uh, nothing can be better than that and they claim that from 1000 kg of plastic we can make 800 uh, liter of diesel per day so that's the greatest uh, Uh, uh claim by indian institute of petroleum iip which is there in dehradun so this is wrong and this is correct only one is the answer here you can see in uttarakhand uh, uh, it was launched and they have been working on on this project since 2006 and uh, they, there is a group of uh, scientists who were working on this issue and they claim about making the petroleum or the diesel from plastic the minister harshvardhan he was uh, informed about this uh, uh, issue and the exhibition was shown to him next national monuments authority this is a important uh, government authority not under archaeological survey of india it is under ministry of culture because it was established by this msr act uh, this act was amended in 2010 so uh, under the provisions of this act this body was uh, set up so this information was there in the pib and uh, uh, the issue of noaps that is the uh, online single window clearance and the application processing unit that is uh, uh, inaugurated and uh, for uh, more than 500 municipal bodies in this country that will be working in a integrated way so that's a new announcement by the minister there and uh, second statement is correct first is wrong only two is the answer here because it was set up under the same act the amendment amended act in 2010 and this authority is working directly under the minister of culture there so the minister of state for culture and tourism prahlad patel he uh, uh, launched an integrated noc online application processing system for national monuments authority for 517 local bodies of six states in new delhi today so 
uh, including New Delhi, six states are there where these local bodies they will get their clearances uh, uh, on this uh, particular system, and uh, no need to go physically there. Online processing will be uh, there, and uh, for the construction related work in prohibited and regulated areas of uh, ASI protected monuments this application will be cleared there so that's an important announcement this uh, NOAPS window system was launched in September 15 actually but the uh, scale was not that much big and these uh, local bodies were not uh, integrated with that now all these integrated bodies all over the country they are uh, 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 going to be facilitated with this system that's a single window system which was announced in 2016 so non single window was announced in 15 and uh, single window was announced in 16 year and this uh, body comes under ministry of culture directly and has been set up under the amesar act next zagros mountains where are these look uh, these mountains located you see this country is uh, much highlighted and uh, that's why they may ask you about the geographic questions related to that so I will uh, give you a hint. Daste Kavir, Daste Lut are also present in the same country, and these are important uh, deserts there. And the Zagros Mountains are also located in the same country. The country is uh, Iran, not Mongolia, not Pakistan. Pakistan, Suleiman Range is there, and Iran, Zagros Mountains are there, and they are uh, 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 located from southeast to northwest, moving towards Turkey. So that's a uh, important uh, detail, and they may ask about these. So this is all for today. We will meet again tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Keep watching. It was a mid -sale.